Hello again, and welcome back to the Slow Flowers Podcast with Deborah Prinzing, episode 498. This is the weekly podcast about slow flowers and the people who grow and design with them. It's all about making a conscious choice, and I invite you to join the conversation and the creative community as we discuss the vital topics of saving our domestic flower farms and supporting a floral industry that relies on a safe, seasonal, and local supply of flowers and foliage. This podcast is brought to you by slowflowers.com, the free online directory to more than 850 florists, shops, and studios who design with local seasonal and sustainable flowers, and to the farms that grow those blooms. It's the conscious choice for buying and sending flowers. And thank you to our lead sponsor for 2021, Farm Grow Flowers. Farm Grow Flowers delivers iconic burlap-wrapped bouquets and lush, abundant arrangements to customers across the U.S., supporting more than 20 U.S. flower farms by purchasing more than $9 million of U.S.-grown fresh and seasonal flowers and foliage annually, and by providing competitive salaries and benefits to 240 team members based in Watsonville, California and Miami, Florida. Discover more at farmgrowflowers.com. For each podcast episode this year, we will also thank three of our major sponsors. Our first thanks goes to Johnny's Selected Seeds, an employee-owned company that provides our industry with the best flower, herb, and vegetable seeds supplied to farms large and small, and even to backyard cutting gardens like mine. Find the full catalog of flower seeds and bulbs at johnnysseeds.com. Today's guests have been on my wish list to interview ever since we met in person at a Slow Flowers gathering in 2018 hosted by Scott Paris of Full Hand Nursery, past guest of this podcast. Please meet Drew Rivers, co-founder of Full Belly Farm, one of the first certified organic farms in California, and her daughter, Hannah Rose Muller, who created their sister venture, Full Belly Floral. They're based in Gwinda in Northern California's Cape Valley. Full Belly is committed to fostering sustainability on all levels, from fertility in the soil and care for the environment to stable employment for farm workers. Striving to be good stewards of their farm, the folks at Full Belly Farm want this and future generations to be nourished by the healthy and vibrant food they produce. Full Belly Farm has been growing a wide variety of certified organic flowers for over 30 years. The farm sells flowers at multiple farmers markets to wholesale distributors and through their CSA. Hannah Muller began Full Belly Floral in the hopes that local and seasonal flowers could help brighten the days of those individuals who are celebrating special occasions. Here's a little bit more about Hannah. She writes on the Full Belly Florals website that her love for flowers started at a very young age, and you'll hear her talk about that in our interview. She continues, When I was little, my mother would spend hours picking buckets filled with flowers to arrange for countless orders and farmer's markets. While she worked, her hands a blur of clippers and blooms, I napped in the back of trucks and in boxes, exhausted from my days exploring. As I got older, I began to share in my mother's enthusiasm for arranging flowers at various community events and farmers markets. To this day, there is no one I have more fun designing with than her. In the past three years, I have grown my love for flowers into a branch of Full Belly Farm, offering local and sustainably grown and arranged flowers for weddings and events. My passion for designing and my intent to continue the important practice of using locally sourced flowers has led me back to the fields of Full Belly Farm and to the one place I have ever truly felt at home. Nothing makes me feel more fulfilled than working with flowers and helping to bring my clients' vision to life. This is such a lovely conversation that you'll hear as I talk with two women spanning the history of Full Belly Farm. I know you'll enjoy meeting them. Be sure to visit DebraPrinzing.com for episode 498 to see photos and find links in all the social places for Drew Rivers and Hannah Rose Muller. So let's jump right in and get started. Welcome back to the Slow Flowers Podcast with Deborah Prinzing, and I am so excited today to have two guests, the mother-daughter duo 
of Drew Rivers, that's the mom, and Hannah Muller, the daughter of Full Belly Farm and Full Belly Floral. Hi, ladies. Hi. Hi. Well, we um, we last saw each other, I think, almost two years ago when I was down in Sacramento. We had a little gathering. So put Full Belly Farm on the map. Like, what? where are you in considered Central California, Northern California? Where uh, Where are you based? Drew, I'll let you go um, first. Yeah, um, we are based in this most beautiful little valley called the Cape Valley. It's located in Northern California. We're about an hour uh, northwest of Sacramento, if anybody um, has that geography. And a very hot, beautiful spot. Um, the valley is small, about 20 miles long and we're at the top end and it's a gorgeous spot. Mm, I love it. That's great. So uh, the valley sounds like it's very agriculture rich and that uh, there are there is a lot of farming there or um, are you one of the one of the pioneers? Yeah, well, um, it's been a farming valley for 100 plus years, really, um, before that of uh, Winton Nation American uh, Indians were here. So we're definitely following in their footsteps. But since we've moved here about 36 years ago, the number of small, young, organic, many of them farmers has, you know, just exploded. So when we first moved here, um, there was only a handful of us and now there's over 50 small farmers in our valley. So wow. really wonderful community. Wow. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, well, you're kind of the uh, matriarch of Full Belly Farm, Drew. So give us sort of a snapshot of all that you encompass and then we'll bring Hannah in to tell us about her port of it, her portion of it. So, yeah, um, the farm is about 400 acres and we are certified organic, the whole thing. That's my and, um, wow. <laughs> and um, we have been actually certified. We are number nine on the CCOF certification list. So we're one of the very first people that um, became certified organic in our area. And um we grow probably a hundred different crops on the farm. We are harvesting 365 days a year. Um, we mostly, our big production is vegetables, um, but we also do fruit, nuts, uh, grains, and of course, flowers. And we also raise a lot of animals. So it's a very diverse farm and um, keeps us all very busy um, all year round. Wow. So yeah, that's kind of a, a bit of a snapshot of who we are presently. So uh, obviously the farm, is, you moved there over 30 years ago. Is how When did you actually establish the farm? So it was in 1984, okay. very auspicious year. Um, the year um, our first son was born. And so, yeah, we moved to this actual farm in 1984 and um, had first started with about 60 acres and have slowly added on and also added on new members to our business um, as we've gone. We have business partners, two other business partners, and now a lot of our kids are back here farming with us too. So um, we have a big farm crew. We hire, we employ about 80 uh, full-time year-round people who are helping every single day pick and pack. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's oh my a farm. Gosh. Wow. That's, I had no idea that scale. Uh, but when you said 400 acres, my mind started doing the math. And of course, you need 80 <laughs> employees. Oh, my gosh. So, Drew, what is what are your main, um, I guess, distribution channels? Is it, it is it like farmer's market or CSA? Or how do you get the product into people's uh, kitchens? So it's a fun a pie chart um, about 30 uh, percent of our pie of uh distribution is through a CSA. Um, 
and we have about an 1800 members CSA, which includes now a flower. Oh, uh, people wow. can add on a flower bouquet. Um, the other percentage of the pie is uh, through direct to stores and restaurants. We probably sell to 50 different restaurants um, and, you know, lots of local stores. And then we also, a, a portion of that pie is also wholesale. So um, going to wholesalers that then sell our stuff um, through to other retailers. Mm. Um, about 90% of our farm produce and products, those stay within about 120 miles of our farm, which is really wonderful. Uh, in the summer, when we're really cranking it, some of it goes out of state, but mostly it stays very local to the Bay Area and to the Sacramento area. Oh, that makes me happy to hear about. Oh, well, I, I hope I get to visit someday. Um, we're only two states away. There should be no reason why I can't come <laughs> I see you. Well, uh, Hannah, you are the uh, chief flower operator, uh, I take it, at Full Belly Farm, because you operate under Full, is it Full Belly Flowers or Full Belly Floral? Full belly floral. Okay. Yeah. And I asked you before we started rec recording, I said, you're kind of self-defined as a farmer florist. And you said, yes. So um, <laughs> tell us, give us a snapshot of full belly floral. Of course, I know we're coming off of COVID. So maybe you didn't have bountiful weddings last summer, but in, in a normal year, what would, what would your um, portfolio look like? Yeah. So I, um, I am the youngest of the four Muller Rivers children, and I moved back about six years ago. And normally I do about uh, 25 weddings a year and um, also host uh, workshops at our farm and at other local venues um, and uh, teach a lot of different classes. And um, yeah, just I, I do a few like pop up shops and um, I do a lot of events in the area. And we also host farm dinners at our farm in normal years and um, that I do the flowers for as well. So um, this like you said, this year has been a little bit of a of a strange year, but also one of an immense learning curve because I've gotten to throw myself more into the the wholesale retail side, um, and then also learn a lot more about the farming operations as well, mm. um, which has been really wonderful. My mom is a, a wealth of knowledge and it's always so fun to work with her and uh, figure out more of the farming operations. That's cool. So uh, the, you've mentioned all the ways that your flowers um, are used in designs, but backing up our Hannah, how involved are you in sort of determining what should be grown and, and, you know, varieties and all, because I, I'm thinking you look at flower growing from a designer's point of view. So you have a particular, you know, set of needs that you're, you're kind of looking at while you're ordering seeds and that sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. And it's definitely been a learning curve too. When I first moved back, I um, didn't know much about, you know, our our growing zone or uh, what grew well for cut flowers versus just for um, for more wedding and design events, because I only need flowers to last, you know, one or two days, whereas um, my mom has been growing flowers uh, very much for, you know, cut flower um, operation where she wants them to have the longest shelf life possible. So it's been really incredible to work with her and sort of figure out um, what grows well and what we can sort of, um, what we can sort of uh, adjust mm -hmm. uh, so that they work for more of my wedding and design uh, skills as well. So wow. um, yeah, I've been working with her pretty closely and with our other our farm manager, Jan, who is wonderful. And um, she and all three of us have sort of um, a fun perspective on what we would like to see. So of the 400 acres of Full Belly Farm, like what is de dedicated to, to growing I'm assuming mostly field crops. I could be wrong on that, but. Um... So um, I could answer that. Yeah. Um, so we have about 15 to 20 acres of cut flowers that wow. we grow every year. Oh my gosh. Um, normally, uh, you know, that is in full production. And um, so, yeah, we're constantly planting 
harvesting, growing more to keep that 15 acres going. And so that's a year round um, amount. Um, and yeah, so it's not a big part of the 400 acres, but um, we're very proud to say, Hannah and I, that um, the flowers have now become our number two, they're vying for number one um, crop, you know, in, uh, income producing crop on the farm. Wow. So um, we're, we're very excited and we're so um, competitive <laughs> that um, we, every year we're trying to up that number. <laughs> you're com- you mean you're competing against your past record? <laughs> We're we're self-competitive as well as we love to prove my my brothers and my dad and the other partners that we can do it with flowers. Wow. Well, just the idea of year round is mind blowing. So like, uh, what are your winter cuts? Is is it be, would it be like, um, uh, sweet peas or bulb crops? So yeah, in the winter, we're actually doing a lot of dried flowers. So we have a pretty dried, a big dried flower operation, um, mostly wreaths and dried bouquets that we're selling. Um, And that sort of keeps our, we have about six women that work full time on our uh, flower crew and that keeps them employed during the winter months. But then anemones and tulips are the first things that we start um uh harvesting Mm -hmm. right around the january february end of january beginning of february oh so you had fresh cut flowers for valentine's day then i'm sure yeah luckily (laughs) we were able to um (laughs) we found out a few different tulip varieties that come on right around valentine's day so it it was it's a great yeah great thing (laughs) was that the add-on bouquet that that drew alluded to like for the csa yeah, it was actually really wonderful that we were able to sell almost all of our tulips through our CSA this year, um, which was great because we were able to sort of know uh, a little bit beforehand how many we had sold. And um, yeah, it worked out really well this year. Do you have anything undercover or is it all field? It's all field uh, grown. And Hannah and I were chuckling the other day because we actually are pretty lazy flower farmers as far as, you know, really, um, you know, pampering. We kind of feel like if you, the flowers have to be tough and they have to make it out in our field. And um, we don't have any high tunnels and, you know, we do have, we do start all of our starts in the greenhouse. But after they go out in the field, they're on their own, and um, we don't do a whole lot of pampering. Wow. I also think we're constantly learning, too, and I feel like social media has been a really wonderful tool in terms of seeing what other people are doing and the stem length that other people are getting, or um, it can be a bit of a comparison game, which can be tricky, but also it's just a great learning uh curve because we you know we are now wanting to try some of our anemones in um in high tunnels next year just because i think we could get a maybe a little bit of a jump start or longer stem length that yeah, could help i think so that. too wow yeah. but the high tunnel um setup isn't required for any of your edible crops is that why you haven't really gone that route before yeah, no, we, we, um, I think we do sh- some shade cloth for our peppers, but really everything is just grown out under, under the sun, which we get really hot in the summer. So that's been another learning curve is, um, figuring out what, what flowers hold up in our summer heat. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, this is just an aside, uh, Hannah, but I am doing an article for Johnny Seeds, um, newsletter, uh, this spring. And it, the topic is, uh, how flower farmers are adapting and changing to, uh, climate conditions in including heat and drought. So I might call you about that because yeah, definitely do. <laughs> I think you have, like it unless you're in the Mojave Desert or something. It, it just can't be any more intense than where yeah, you guys are. Yeah, we get are. about uh, we've gotten to about 118, 115, um, and we have multiple weeks that stay above the 95 to 105 range. So it's okay. definitely um, yeah. I'll be calling and, you. And <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I would love to just step back for a minute and talk about you, both of your paths to farming and 
uh, this lifestyle you have. I mean, I, we should start with Drew. You said that you moved uh, to this land right when you were a young newlywed and had your first baby. Like, were you a Cal- are you a California native or did you come from somewhere else? What was your journey? Um, my journey was I grew up in a very rural area in Vermont, actually. Wow. So very different from um, <laughs> where I am now. But I came out here to go to UC Davis um, and study agriculture. I was really interested in farming. Uh, I think I had this picture of a cute little Vermont farm uh, with maybe a few acres but um, I studied ag out here in California and then met um, my husband and we moved together on this land that we are on now um, when, yeah, I was 26 in, in 1984 and, um, you know, really focused a lot on just trying to make it as a young couple um, but we had so many lofty goals um, <laughs> to be organic and provide really fresh. You know, we were kind of part of this whole movement of uh, local, fresh, um, you know, direct to restaurants and stores. So um, I think as a mom, though, and also trying to raise, we had four children and um, I, I, and being a very um, independent uh, minded woman, I really wanted a part of the farm that was kind of rep, rep, represented me. And um, so I started growing flowers, literally in about a 10 by 10 little garden, and, and then slowly increased that um, as my time allowed. And um, you know, finally said, I really want to have flowers be a part of the farm. My kids, Hannah grew up at my side, helping to pick. Um, At that time, you know, we were bunching flowers at midnight to get ready uh, for markets. And it was a great, it was crazy. Um, But slowly, you know, over the last 20 years, we have you know, moved up from a half acre to then an acre. And pretty soon the other people on the farm were saying, hey, why don't you plant some more flowers? Because these actually are making us some more money than lettuce. So (laughs) I was going to say, like, you really are demonstrating the value added truth about growing flowers. Yeah. Yeah. So then, you know, it's now emerged um, to be a pretty big part of our business Um, Like I said, we have, you know, our CSA customers, we sell flowers wholesale, we sell to the farmers markets. Uh, Having Hannah come back to the farm has been one of the best things, Um, partly because as you know, my enthusiasm is less sometimes for farming and having that new energy and um, love and passion has reignited my passion too. So um, that's, that's my path. Yeah. I love it. Um, we are almost exactly the same age and I got married in 1984 at age 25 <laughs> and I'm just, uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking, wow, your path has been so inspiring and you guys are, tr- were truly pioneers in terms of like, <clears throat> the Chez Panisse, Alice Waters scene was all kind of blowing up when you started your farm in terms of the whole slow food side of things, right? Yeah. I mean, we used to grow the little petite every there for, um, for Chez Panisse. And we still, after 36 years, sell to them. Um, so, yeah, it has been definitely um, a journey on the kind of riding the wave of this local um, food movement and, um, the slow food, slow yeah. flowers. I mean, it's, it's been a wonderful journey. Wow. Honestly. Wow. And here's your baby, Hannah, who's now, <laughs> you said you, I'm assuming you, you grew up kind of enjoying flowers with your mom because she, or she just was doing yeah. chi- childcare while she was working. How did it, <laughs> a little bit your, of both, I think. <laughs> yeah. What are your memories, Hannah? <laughs> I, so I was homeschooled until eighth grade. And so I think I spent a lot of time, my mom has a beautiful garden and I spent a lot of time, uh, there. I was sort of always connected to flowers, um, and 
flower fairies and spending time outside. Um, and my mom says one of like my sort of earliest words were asking her if something was ripe, if flowers were ripe to pick out in the, uh, in the middle of the flower. Oh, I field. love it. <laughs> um, Is it right? So, was she like, how old was she? Like three? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. Um, and then I, of course, had my like angsty teenage years where I didn't want anything to do with farming or uh, or our farm. And I moved away to college. Um, I went to the University of Oregon. And as soon as I stepped foot on that campus, I fell in love with the student farm there um, and just sort of reconnected with the land and with farming and small scale farming. And that's also uh, right when the um, 50 mile bouquet book came out was right around that time. Oh, wow. And I picked it up um, a, in a in a, a, book, a small bookstore and I like fell in love with that book and sort of recommitted myself to farming and, and visualizing that it doesn't have to look like a certain way. It can be, um, you know, with flowers, it can be on a smaller scale. Um, it can be more design focused. So uh, I studied sociology, which has nothing to do with flowers, but has helped a lot with the wedding, um, <laughs> right. dealing, uh, <laughs> dealing with couples and dealing with mothers of brides. Um, <laughs> right. But I moved back um, about about seven years ago and um, sort of had proposed my business plan to the farm partners um, of, you know, using our flowers in more of a design aspect and, um, working directly with clients and with, uh, with, uh, you know, people around the area. I noticed that we were set sending all of our flowers to the Bay area, which isn't that far away, but I really wanted people in the area to enjoy our mm. flowers and especially in a, a design aesthetic. Right, as well. right. So that's sort of my history, but, um, I have loved the flower farming journey so, so much. I, I mean, when I moved back, um, you think that as a farmer's daughter, you will have learned a lot through osmosis and you do, you really do. But a lot of it was a huge learning curve too. And it still is. And um, it's been really wonderful, you know, learning all about what grows well in our, our climate um, and working with my mom as well has just been incredible. Wow, that's so cool. So prior to launching Full Belly Floral, were, were people like coming to you, Drew, and wanting to buy buckets of flowers for the, like the DIY wedding, that sort of thing? Or you didn't really offer design services per se? No, no. Um, I am definitely not a designer. Um, I'm a farmer. And so I never really even thought about that very much. I mean, we did occasional friends weddings or, um, you know, close, close relatives, but really um, Hannah brought that whole notion of design in to the whole flower wow. business. Wow. And, ha and Hannah, yeah. are you, I mean, what gave you the confidence to do it? Did you take workshops or did you just sort of self taught? Are you self taught? I mean, your aesthetic is beautiful. I follow you on Instagram. I see what you're posting. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I feel like a, it's been a little bit of both. I took one floriculture class in high school that was very much, you know, carnations and how to tie a bow and yeah, um, and wire it, a rose. It was, exactly. It was, yeah. um, but I did learn a lot of the foundations of how to make a boutonniere or corsage um, in that class. Um, and then a lot of it was just YouTube or following people on Instagram, reading books that I really were, was inspired by. Um, and then also um, I did, you know, invest in a few courses over the years. Mm -hmm. um, but I think mainly it's just been through practice and trial and error. Um, and yeah, I think our farm is, is incredible because we do grow at such a large scale that it's really fun to go out and find those specific flowers that I am drawn to for my design. So it, and I try to incorporate our fruits and vegetables and flowering branches and everything from our farm as, as much as possible too, because I love that co-mingling yeah. between the farm and the flowers. Right. Cause the Sacramento Valley is, is a very much an orchard vibe as well. So you have those early prunings of flowering I guess yeah, the exactly. fruit trees, and right? I, I love walking around the farm and finding things that maybe 
people wouldn't necessarily imagine putting in um, to our bouquets, but it really works. And especially it draws out our season a little bit longer. So in the spring, when we don't have quite as much blooming, you know, to be able to go harvest olives or blooming plum, that really helps um, pro prolong our, our process mm -hmm. a little bit as well. It sounds like it's just such a good representation of an organic farm to show a broader, you know, definition of what's in a design ingredient too. Like, is she designing with things that you wouldn't have normally picked up and put in a vase, Drew? Yes, like, like kale. Uh, dino kale was her latest one that she mixed with tulips. And so, uh, you know, it's so fun to see what she comes up with. It's just amazing. And I bet yeah. the customers love that too. Like, it's a foliage. Yeah, I, it's a I salad. think the farmer's market, especially because people are already there to buy our produce. And then they see that, that commingling between our, our flowers and our vegetables. And I think people really appreciate that there. Wow. Wow. So tell me about the events that you have had at uh, Full Belly and, and, and maybe you've had a pause, but um, I've seen some of the photos of these really impressive farm to table dinners. When did that start? And how did that get, how did the, that become part of your, your mix? Yeah, so my brother, my oldest brother and his wife moved back, um, oh gosh, what, 10 years ago or something like that. And they have started an amazing farm to table. Um, they do uh, monthly farm dinners. And then they also do these amazing pizza nights where they do brick oven pizzas and uh, home churned ice cream. And people can come out and we have an a, amazing event space that was just built a couple or a couple of years ago. And that has sort of hosted a lot of the events that we have. Um, we try to do open farm days. I mean, a lot of this was unfortunately just to protect our farm workers and to protect our, our farm was um closed for the last year but hopefully we'll be opening yeah. up again soon but we do you know our, an open farm day for all of our csa customers it's really wonderful and then i have loved doing on farm floral design classes where people can actually go out into the field and harvest the flowers and then bring them back in and um, do a farm to table lunch with that so there's so many opportunities to have people out to our farm and sort of get to taste uh, the, the vegetables and the flowers that are out in the field. It's really wonderful. Wow. Are you drawing people from as far away as the Bay area or is it closer to home? Yeah. Most of the people that come to our farm dinners are from the Bay area. Wow. That's yeah. Uh, the majority of our CSA customers live in the Bay area. And so we have people coming from, you know, three or four, four hours away to come to a farm dinner and Luckily, we have, you know, a camping site so people can stay and spend the night. And it's, yeah, it's been oh, really wow. wonderful. All right. If you're listening and this sounds like an amazing getaway, get on get on Full <laughs> Belly Farms mailing list because I'm sure once you open up, uh, you know, you open things up again, you you start with marketing to your mailing list, right? Your, yeah. your core customers. Yeah. Do you have weddings on the farm or where are the weddings that you are serving um, primarily in this in your area, Hannah? Yeah, so for the most part, they um, are on the farm. We, we do a, we do about six weddings on the farm, about 10 in the past, but we're going to try to scale that back a little bit and focus more on the farm dinners because um, they're a little less work. And, um, you I know, can only as imagine. A, <laughs> as a farm too, you know, you need to have um, certain infrastructure for weddings and then certain infrastructure for the farm aspect. So, um, but yeah, there's an, also an amazing amount of venues in our area at local wineries and um, different uh, sort of farm to fork yeah. events mm -hmm. there. So um, I do weddings sort of all in the area and then also in the Bay area as well. Wow. But I try to stay as local as possible. Right, right. But you do drag, you do drag Drew in to help when you need an extra set of hands, I'm sure. <laughs> What, yeah, definitely. What do you like to do, Drew? The the centerpieces, something that's like broader uh, stroke. Uh, <laughs> no, I like to just go pick the flowers for her, and then um, yeah. she she's really good at flower crowns. Actually, <laughs> flower crowns are her specialty. I love it. What a what a good division of labor. Well, you're just telling painting such a, a magical story, but I just know it's all because of being fierce women and having a lot of grit. This isn't, you're not wearing your peasant dresses and straw hats out there in your bare feet. This is a lot of work, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She says <laughs> after three plus decades, you, you could speak from experience. 
Wow. What's uh, what do you anticipate for 2021 as we're kind of I mean, you have no downtime. So you're you're you don't have the typical dormant period that farmers in other parts of the, of the country might have. You're you're already full full steam ahead, right? Yeah, and you know, Deborah, it's really been an interesting experience the whole COVID and the um pandemic um has actually brought people back into local, into wanting to eat really well, and into flowers. Our um, CSA numbers or our flower subscription, um, people can get a bouquet from April 1st to October um, through our CSA, and that tripled last year in numbers of people. So, you know, it... um, Farmers were definitely essential workers during this past year and has, you know, really um, made such a huge statement about how people want to spend their money, how their dollars um, staying local has been really important to people, which has made us actually busier than ever. So um, despite you know this kind of countrywide lockdown we were incredibly busy and we're kind of expecting and hoping honestly that that will keep going I think that people's whole mindset has changed about how they eat and where their food comes from and where their flowers come from Um, and I I really think that that's a long-term change I don't expect that so um you know, that part of our business is going to continue to stay really busy. Um, I'm hopeful Hannah's uh, floral things can continue, Hannah. Yeah, I think um, just like my mom said, this year has been a a shift in mindset. And definitely for me, um, most of my weddings were canceled or postponed until uh, this year or next year. And um, I think a lot the wedding industry has just sort of seen a huge change as well in in smaller weddings happening and more elopements and I've always been drawn to that um as a designer as well and so um and I'm trying to not book as many large-scale weddings it's a lot of stress um on my own person and then also just (laughs) dealing with that those people for you know a year plus is a lot of um sort of investment and so Uh, This last year, I worked, one of my main jobs was to make the bouquets for the CSA every week. So um, that was really, really incredible. And I really enjoyed having my hands actually physically working with flowers every day. Um, And I think that is something that I hope will continue for the next year, because um, it was really wonderful to get to work with the, our flower crew and also with my mom and, and sort of have my hands dirty with flowers every day and be out in the field harvesting. Yeah. Yeah. I have one comment for what some in response to something Drew said and one question for something you said, Hannah. Drew, um, I love the forecast you just shared uh, about just the, the shift of thinking in among consumers. And I, I do sense that, you know, there is a little bit of a worry about, well, once once people can be social again and travel and, you know, spend their money on, you know, going out to eat or, or whatever, going to theater, that that money will, you know, migrate away from flowers. But I, I think that we've created a whole new set of habits for people. And so it's not a luxury. It's a, it's just a part of their lifestyle. And I'm, if you've got CSA customers, you're probably hearing from them about what they think of your, your program. And yeah, I'm, I really, um, maybe I'm always a farmer optimist, um, but I really do feel like this shift isn't temporary. I, I honestly feel like people have come back. It's been such a mind blowing experience for so many people, um, you know, just the worry and the fear and, but also expansion of your thought process of how, how do I really want to spend my life? And, right. you know, your precious, how precious everything is. And, um, I feel like people are, that's going to stay. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't see that going away. So I, I'm really hopeful that, uh, you know, that, uh, your whole business too, Deborah of slow oh. flowers and your, 
um, you know, message that you're trying to get out, I think has really come home to roost for people. And I, I think that um, I'm so excited about yeah, that. Yeah, that, I agree. That's really affirming. Uh, okay, my question for Hannah is, if you were designing the CSA bouquets every week, I'm sure that wasn't just one little recipe that everybody copied. And, and I mean, I can only imagine when you're designing a CSA bouquets that everyone is, <laughs> it's like a one of a kind composition. How did you discipline yourself? <laughs> you're probably doing hundreds, right? Yeah, at first I think I treated each one as a bridal bouquet, which is, <laughs> and I still do. I mean, the ones that just went out, um, you know, and that are going to the, our farmer's market, I have been really trying to put a lot of my love and energy and sort of um, do these like sort of mixed bouquet medleys that I, that I come up with in my brain. But um, for the CSA, it, it is like, I mean, one of the amazing things about having a CSA is that for us, we usually use some of the stuff that is coming on the most um, prolifically right. in that week. So um, usually it's only a mix of like four or five ingredients, um, but they're the most beautiful at that at that time. So um, it is it is very quick. You have to do it, you know, um, within within a minute. Um, or, or faster if you can, I would time myself. I mean, I think that self co competition came into play because I would time myself every single day. Like, how can I do it faster? And I mean, I was making, you know, a hundred plus bouquets a day. So it was definitely, and harvesting those, those flowers. So oh it's my gosh. really, really fun and um, exhausting, especially yeah. Mother's Day week. My <sighs> hands were just like so, so dead. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but it's like your designs in that regard are growers choice. Like people just have to know they're getting the very freshest, best, gorgeous, you know, choice that, that you've pulled out of the field. And so they can't help but love it. And it's part yeah, of your exactly. story. Yeah, exactly. And we did, we were able to send out a little questionnaire survey at the end of the, the year, you know, ask people if they enjoyed it or what they would change. And overwhelmingly we got a really positive response and people really enjoyed just seeing what was blooming at our farm. Um, and I think that, I mean, with the CSA you're eating seasonally. And so I feel like the flower should also showcase just what's, what's most beautiful during that time as well. Yep. And now you know how to pick a ripe flower. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a great story of a child uh, because you were surrounded by ripe fruit and ripe vegetables. And so, of course, the flowers had to be ripe. That's well, great. now it's I'm always like heckling my mom out in the field because I feel like I, <laughs> it's come full circle. She's, <laughs> I'm the one who's like, Mom, I don't think that's quite right. <laughs> what a beautiful story. Oh, my God. Well, this has been so much fun. Please uh, share some photos with me that I can put in our show notes to just transport the listeners to just a little slice of life at Full Belly Farm and Full Belly Floral. And um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I'm so excited that I might, I mean, if, if everything goes as planned, we'll see each other at the Slow Flower Summit in June, Yeah, um, yes. which will be yeah. hard for you guys to get off the farm for a couple of days. So I'm glad you have partners and, and crew to give you a little yes. bit of an escape. <laughs> We're coming. <laughs> yay. Yay. I'm so glad. Um, anything else you want to add before we wrap up? I, I, I could talk to you guys forever, but you know, I'm trying to keep be disciplined with my length of time. I yeah, I think that's it. Thank you so much for having us. I love, yeah, I loved it. You. I love thank the picture. You, oh, thank you so much, Drew. And I love the picture of Hannah finding the 50 mile bouquet in Eugene. That book came out nine years ago. So we've all, yeah. we've all come a long way since then. <laughs> and, um, it, you know, our, we live in a, in a part of the country that has, you know, the abundance of milder climate. And even here in the Pacific Northwest, you know, people are extending their seasons. So, um, I just, you've, sn you've sparked some imagination for people who are trying to think about how they could extend the seasons with dried flowers and with events and, you know, just, diversification so i hope yeah, that's definitely. the message today thank you thank you deborah okay take good care this has been a treat and we'll uh we'll see each other soon okay perfect thanks take care okay thank you. Bye bye, bye.
That was so fun, right? What a great conversation. It's so inspiring to think about the many ways that flower farming and floral design bring added value to a food growing operation. Did you hear Drew mention that flowers are Full Belly Farms' number two crop? And the Flower CSA subscriptions tripled in 2020? You can't argue with that news. Our next sponsor thank you goes to Syndicate Sales, an American manufacturer of vases and accessories for the professional florist. Look for the American flag icon to find Syndicate's USA-made products and join the Syndicate Stars loyalty program at syndicatesales.com. You might have heard me mention to Drew and Hannah how much I'm looking forward to seeing them again this June at the Slow Flowers Summit, which takes place at Filoli Historic House and Garden in Woodside, California, just south of San Francisco. Yes, folks, we are 100% committed to hosting a safe, COVID-compliant, all-outdoor conference on June 28th and 29th, and you are invited to join us. We are working closely with the administration and horticulture staff at Filoli to ensure a successful summit for all. It will require some adjustments, but we're ready for them. Our sessions will move to an outside venue with monitors for the PowerPoint presentations and with carefully served, individually portioned meals to ensure everything is safe for all. The grounds at Filoli are stunning and the weather will be perfect so we can gather socially distanced and learn, connect, share ideas, and experience community. If you're interested in joining us, please check out the links that I'll have in today's show notes. And check out the Slow Flower Summit news page with two new speaker profiles of Abra Lee and Max Gill, interviewed by our contributor, Mariah Towner. I'm so ready for this year's summit. It has been great connecting with everyone over Zoom and online this past year, but nothing can replace the human face-to-face connection, with masks, of course. Our final sponsor thank you goes to Rooted Farmers, which is also our premier sponsor for the Slow Flowers Summit. Rooted Farmers works exclusively with local growers to put the highest quality specialty cut flowers in floral customers' hands. When you partner with Rooted Farmers, you are investing in your community, and you can expect a commitment to excellence in return. Learn more at rootedfarmers.com. Thanks so much for joining us today. The Slow Flowers podcast has been downloaded more than 706,000 times by listeners like you. Thank you for listening, commenting, and sharing. It means so much. As our movement gains more supporters and more passionate participants who believe in the importance of our domestic cut flower industry, the momentum is contagious. I know you feel it too. I value your support and invite you to show your thanks to support Slow Flowers' ongoing advocacy, education, and outreach activities. You can find the donate button in the column to the right at deborahprinzing.com. I'm Deborah Prinzing, host and producer of the Slow Flowers podcast. Next week, you're invited to join me in putting more Slow Flowers on the table, one vase at a time. And if you like what you hear, please consider logging onto iTunes and posting a listener review. The content and opinions expressed here are either mine alone or those of my guests alone, independent of any podcast sponsor or other person, company, or organization. The Slow Flowers Podcast is engineered and edited by Andrew Brenlin. Learn more about his work at soundbodymovement.com. 